Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar on using Sentinel satellite data for visualizing river, lake and ocean processes. The motivation for this webinar is that there's a new way to access Copernicus satellite data through the Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem Browser. And I want to show you some examples of how to use imagery for inland and coastal water research. We will walk through the process of creating GIF animations, uh, time-lapse animations of satellite image time series, and I will also demonstrate how to use custom scripts for specific visualization of image uh, spectral indices. So why do we want to observe processes on the water with satellite images anyway? I think the main reason for this is the vast range of scales uh, for aquatic processes. Some of these happen at the scale of centimeters, like little whirlpools, and others happen at the scale of hundreds of kilometers. And this also applies to the time scales. Some are really slow, some are really fast. But if you want to observe, you can only spend so much time standing on the shore or out on the water in your boat. If you want to put in a sensor, that's only going to record at one specific point. So you need this overview of the situation in order to see what's going on. In this small time lapse of the Lake Maracaibo outlet, you can see that the water coming out from, from the outlet is sometimes laden with a lot of sediment, sometimes it's clear, and then depending on the ocean currents outside, it's dissipating towards the east or the west or forming one large uh, plume, really depending on, on what the situation is. And if we zoom into a completely different spatial and time scale and we look at the shore, we speed up the processes on the time lapse a lot, then you can see that the water moves relatively fast compared to compared to the sediment compared to the land there's this sand spit on the on the right hand side which is continually growing as the water is depositing the sediment in these streaks or fingers one after the other so at this scale of observation we're not looking at the process on, on the water we're looking at the processes in the sedimentation but we can also visualize them by speeding up time and zooming in at the right scale one more example um, an ice walk on the lake shore on a spring day when the ice is breaking up. Standing on the shore, this is the scale you observe. You see the horizon, you see patches of ice moving around. But if you look at it from above, this is a Landsat image, then you see as the whole story unfolds, you see that on the southern shore of the lake, the ice is still uh, standing there. It hasn't broken up. You see the typical crack patterns of the ice. You see this bright white line, which is separating the open water from the ice with the pancake ice, the, the little ice um, flows being pushed one on top of the other. You see the, the streaks that are parallel to the wind north uh, south direction approximately, which are the mixing process of the water in these spiral shaped currents as, as it's moving with the wind. You see how the waves are also forming big wave systems which collect the ice uh, packs. And you can see how what you observed on the shore, the, the ice patch is moving around, uh, moving in the direction of the wind is forming one continuous streak along the shore. So you can observe at a completely different scale. You can put your observations into context and you can understand a lot more of what's going on. So satellite images really help us with the scale. And these images can then be compared with other measurements. Uh, they help you to familiarize with the new research area. Also, if you are outreaching to non-scientists to show them the, the big picture, literally and they help to, to identify the spatial and temporal context of the processes that you measure. Our main workhorse for visual interpretation of, of water processes is Sentinel-2. This is an optical camera uh, collecting data in the visible and near-infrared bands, and uh, that means that the data can be interpreted visually. They, they speak to us in a relatively uh, easy way. Some of the narrowband near-infrared channels are at 20 meter resolution. Most of the, the RGB and broadband near-infrared is 10 meter resolution, so really quite detailed. And then there are some 60 meter resolution channels that are mainly used for atmospheric correction. And the revisit time, if there's no clouds, is five days at the equator, but more frequent further north and south as the, as the swaths overlap. What you see on this little image is a, a harbor where there's also an inlet. So the water is flowing in between the harbor piers and it has a lot of color dissolved organic matter. It's black. And as the waters of the, of the lake move from from east to west, they are carrying uh, this plume of, of dark water with them, and you can see the individual whirlpools forming through um, this, this flow or movement process. Okay, Sentinel-2 doesn't only help with uh, lakes it act or ocean shores, it's actually detailed enough to see many, many river processes. This is a case of the Tagliamento River, one of the last unregulated gravel bedded rivers in Europe. The discharge of the river depends a lot on the season. Snow melt is creating a, a lot of water which is moving through and uh, pushing the gravel slowly downstream. 
and in summer the, the river nearly completely dries up. So if you are standing there, as you see on the left hand image from Google Street View, if you're standing there on the bridge, you see a large vast expanse of gravel. But if you look at it in a satellite imagery time series, you will really see how the meanders change, how the islands change and how this, this large mass of gravel is slowly, slowly moving downstream with, with the river processes. Again, another river, this is an inlet in Madagascar. It's really nice to see how the flood channels move, how the islands are formed, how the meanders shift, and also, again, how the sediment plume, the, the fresh water coming into the ocean, is dissipated depending on the, on the current and wave patterns on, on the lake. And also, on the open surface of the water, you see uh, the patterns created by sun glint. So depending on the orientation of the surface, a lot of the light can be reflected back into uh, the satellite sensor. And this means that the, the periodic uh, patterns on the surface of the of the water will reflect the shape of the wave fronts or the, the shape of the, the processes that the uh, wind is inducing on the top of the on the top of the water surface. Lake processes once more in lakes. We often have natural tracers, so either a, a river which is bringing in a lot of sediment or a, a river or a patch of water which has a lot of colored dissolved organic matter, this rich black uh, material created by, by decomposition of wetland plants, can act as a natural tracer. It shows us in which direction the water is moving depending on the, on the winds and the currents of, of the lake. But actually, it's not only physical processes that you can observe through satellite imagery, but also biological processes. Eutrophication is one of the recurring problems in many lakes in Europe. It's when algae start to grow really, really rapidly because they have a large uh, supply of nutrients. And then this changes the water quality. It can even make it unsuitable for bathing. And these processes also happen at really complex spatial patterns and uh, longer term timescales. So they can be really nicely observed in satellite imagery. In this particular series, we see an algae bloom peak, which occurred in 2019 on the lake, and it uh, set a record for chlorophyll quantity uh, in the water. And this can be visualized with this time series step in true color, but it can also be visualized using a spectral index that is sensitive specifically to the, to the water quality, to the amount of chlorophyll and suspended sediment. So in this visualization, you see again that sometimes the sediment is churned up, the lake is overcome by sediment, the water is not transparent, and then as the sediment settles down, you can uh, take a, an impression of the growth of the algae as it happens through time. And the good news is actually that creating these time lapses, creating these custom scripts, is really, really easy. So I'm going to show you how this goes. It all starts in the Copernicus data space ecosystem. So this is the new uh, entry point of, of the European Space Agency to Earth observation data. And if you uh, register and log in, then the first thing you see is this browser window, which is where uh, the data can be opened and visualized. So you can browse to a specific location of interest. In this demo, we are going to my favorite place, which is the Tihany Peninsula on Lake Balaton in Hungary. And then if you just hit show the latest date, it pulls up a satellite image of the latest image uh, that, that is available from the area. And then if you want to create a time lapse, on the right hand side, you click on this little film strip on create time lapse animation. It selects an area of interest for you, or you can draw one by hand. And if you hit the play button, the time lapse tool pops up. So on the left hand uh, top corner, you can set the actual time frame of the time lapse in terms of years or months. You can also set the frequency of the images you want to use. Typically, we set this to daily, but it could be less if you are looking at a, uh, a long time period. And then you want to set the cloud coverage. There is a threshold to cloud. So if, um, if you don't want the cloudy images in there, then you can just pull that down and you will be discarding the images that are cloudy. And the, the slide there on the top, minimum tile coverage gives you how much of the of the image canvas has to be covered by the, the data tile. In some cases, if you have a satellite swath that covers just part of the image, then these can be dropped if you if you set this tile coverage to 100%. Okay, you have these settings, you just click on search, and you're going to get a list of images uh, illustrated by thumbnails. And you can scroll through this list. You can uncheck the ones that you don't want to include in your time lapse because of clouds or because it's in the wrong season. And then, you click play and you can start playing the GIF. So creating a, a time lapse image of years and years of satellite imagery is as simple as this. And then you have an image which shows you how the water moves around your lake or your, your river or ocean. And you can observe 
the, the spatial and temporal context of the patterns you are interested in. There's a bit of a trade-off in the Sentinel data between the revisit time and the spatial resolution. So Sentinel-2 has a revisit time of 45 days, depending on the place and 10 meter resolution. But Sentinel-3 is also available, which is a different satellite with daily revisits, but lower spatial resolution, 300 meter spatial resolutions. There's also the option if you have an image that you particularly like or you want to use for further analysis to download the data directly from the ecosystem browser. OK, so much for satellite image time series. And then we can look at custom scripts. There's a, a massive custom script repository actually under custom scripts.sentinelhub.com for many different satellites and many different applications. So uh, a custom script is a short JavaScript uh, code snippet which performs a pixel by pixel analysis and visualization in one of these uh, browser applications, either the Copernicus data space browser or the, the, or the Sentinel Hub EO browser. So in this repository, um, you can open up the code and you can paste it into, into the browser and I'll show you how. So back to the starting point, we have a location and we are looking at the alternatives for visualization. The easiest one is true color, but others are also possible. The second one down is false color where vegetation um, reflecting in the infrared is emphasized by putting it into the into the red channel. You can also use uh, a spectral index directly. This is the normalized difference water index with a, a blue to green palette applied to it. This is going to highlight water areas in blue and dry land in green. But what we want now is to create a custom visualization. So if you just click this, then again, several opportunities for custom visualizations pop up. One of these is just to drag the bands uh, onto the RGB fields and, and look at the results. But here we want to use our own custom script. OK, so a custom script has two main parts. One of them is a, a mathematical operation on the pixel band values one by one. And the second part is the visualization of the results, the digital numbers that come out of this mathematical operation using a, a color palette. So these are the two things that you have to regulate in the code of a custom script. Of course, the easiest way is to use a custom script is to uh, copy and paste one from an existing script and maybe tweak the settings. This is what we are going to do now. So back to uh, custom scripts.sentinelhub.com. This is the repository. And for this example, we select Sentinel2. And then uh, we have a list of different algorithms for Sentinel-2. Scroll down a bit for marine and other water bodies environment algorithms, and then select the script. It's called the Ulysses Water Quality Viewer in our case. So each of these uh, individual scripts has a description of the functions. It has a couple of example images. And on the top, if you say show script, then uh, the exact code is popping up. So you have to copy all this and then paste the text into the into the script window on the browser. And then refresh the eval script and up pops the visualization with the color palette and the mathematical calculation of the bands. So this is how you input a custom script. You can also actually create time lapse with the visualization of a custom script. You can create your own scripts or you can compare many different ones. So this is how you can explore imagery in the in the data space ecosystem browser. OK, to wrap up, um, this is the new uh, data source for accessing Sentinel Earth observation data. Feel free to explore and download it. This also includes an opportunity for downloading print quality images for your bedroom wall. It has the full archive of Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-3 over land and coast, not for open oceans. For open oceans, there's a completely different uh, data inf infrastructure, the ESA Ocean Virtual Laboratory. That's also a nice tool. And then it offers you the visualization of satellite image time series and spectral indices to, to put a new perspective on your favorite study sites. You can see the processes in addition to patterns as they happen across temporal and spatial scales, and you can use this to develop new tools and applications. Thank you for your attention, and please stay tuned on datapace.copernicus.eu news.